time building new cot. And uh, you know, for me, a garage is pretty much just a place to park my car. What a concept, huh? But there are some people for whom a garage is more than just a garage. It's a passion palace. It's a place where they pursue their unique and sometimes exotic interests to the point where they almost build a shrine to them. Well, I wrote about a bunch of garages for the winter issue of Delaware Beach Life magazine, and I thought we'd revisit a few of them today. And the first one we're gonna check out here is Lynn Worrell's workshop, which is a garage like you've never seen before. What inspired you to turn your garage over to this passion of yours? Uh, my, my wife had something to do with it, and I was looking for something after retirement. Mm -hmm. And I retired approximately um, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. now. And uh, it was attractive. I always enjoyed like renovating the house. I saw a couple videos with these master woodworkers. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's something I could really really enjoy it. Yeah. And I actually enjoy the process of just getting it ready, the project ready, yeah. as much as I do is assembling the project and seeing the I finish. hear that from a lot of people who are creative. Right. It's, it's yeah. the, the assembly process and it's actually the, the, the final assembly is less rewarding than the planning and the <coughs> inspiration. Why is it important to have a space like this for what you're doing? Uh, organization is a big thing with me. Mm -hmm. you know, and, but I just like uh, the solitude. Yeah. You know, I, I enjoy thinking about things and I enjoy my music and I enjoy future plans that I'm thinking about. I get a lot done. Lynn, thanks for sharing your garage with us. Good luck with your next project. And uh, next time we come back, we'll see a big tool chest on that uh, Absolutely. Yeah, tool cabinet. Very Absolutely. cool. Thanks Good so much. See you again, man. Thank you. Well, we're in Jim Ryan's garage here in Lewis, and I feel like when this garage door opens, I should hear Ethel Merman singing another <laughs> opening, another show. You nailed it. Because this is a little mini Broadway theater in, in your garage. Well, I have a guest room that's called the Diva Guest Room with all these amazing programs from shows that I've seen and shows that my grandparents saw that have all been framed. And I worked in the industry where a lot of celebrities that I work with, like Nancy Wilson and Whitney Houston and that kind of crowd. So they go in this diva guest room and they go, wow, Jim, this is kind of cool. And I kind of spooled and all the extra ones kind of came down to the garage because there's no space in that diva guest room. So I had a dinner party and one of my buddies saw the programs and went, I have a bunch of programs too I could give you. And so I went to his house for dinner and he gave me like 150 of all these programs that are signed wow. from the 1960s and the early 70s. Now tell me about this. The, uh, above the door here, it looks like we have a balcony up here, people of playbills <laughs> staring down at us. Yeah. Where, where, where are they from? Those are all from shows I actually saw. You know, I, I would go up to Manhattan probably with clients and entertain people, and I would see maybe, you know, four or five shows a month. Well, this is a project that doesn't seem to have an end to it. Uh, do you have plans for a three-car garage? Will the no, neighbors let you add? I think I'm going to have enough time just with the ceiling. But it's sad because you know, I really don't want to take anything down. Once it's up, Yeah. It's not like I can, I can't rotate the programs and I can rotate the costumes, but <laughs> I think I have about five more years and then I can call it quits. Okay, well, good luck. Thanks Thank so you. much. Good seeing you see again. You. Thanks. Well, this is my brother-in-law, Paul Yeager, and we're in his garage. And actually this garage and Paul were the inspiration for doing the story in the first place. Because for years, it's been my favorite garage in the world here in Lewis. And, uh, Paul, it's, um, what's your theme? My theme? Elevator pitch, what's Having your theme? Having fun. <laughs> Having fun. Good uh, enough, yeah. Well, it's, 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 I was very happy and proud that you asked me to do this because uh, garages, or without the ability to have a garage, has been a big stay of my life. Yeah. In terms of my family, I've been into cars and motorcycles since the 50s and 60s. This garage right now has been my gift to myself from retiring. Yeah, well, you it's, deserve it. Well, I incorporated some of the things that I really wanted. My brothers and I have always dreamed about having the, the garage, uh -huh. which would have had a pit in it, a wash area, and enough uh, for six cars. Uh, there's a famous writer for road track, uh, Peter Egan, and he talks about his garage. 
If you ever want to read something about a great, great garage, it's his. Oh, wow. Uh, but he's a great author. You should have told me about that before I wrote the story. Oh, I see. Yeah, Peter Regan. Because then he just ripped it off. <laughs> well, that's our look at garages. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Uh, I got to go home now, I guess, and check out my garage and look at the pool toys hanging from nails on the walls and rethink my priorities. But it's going to be great. Just wait. I'm going to hang with Paul for a while, so thanks for coming. See you later. <laughs>